to I don't know. hours later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello everyone. So today we are filming our first video of our lectures in English. Today we decided to talk about Russian and American stereotypes, uh, where they come from and other interesting things. So let us begin. Uh, first of all, what is a stereotype? So stereotypes are generalized uh, social experiences of people and they reflect uh, common and uh, repetitive things in their everyday life. In other words, uh, stereotypes is uh, the function of a human brain. Uh, that's the way our brain works. We, we think in stereotypes and uh, the stereotypes help us to uh, uh, reflect reality and react uh, to reality. So if someone says uh, something like winter uh, so you get a, a stereotypical image in your brain immediately like snow cold warm clothes I, I don't know uh, ice and so on and and that's the way uh, we we function that's the way we we work uh, but of course uh, it is more interesting uh, for our purposes uh, to speak about social stereotypes and national stereotypes, ethnic stereotypes, mm -hmm. what people of different cultures, different uh, nations and ethnicities uh, think of each other and mm -hmm. how they perceive each other. Uh, so, and that's a big a chunk uh, of uh, the course of intercultural communication. Okay, so... Um where do stereotypes come from? Uh, stereotypes uh, usually come from the so-called word of mouth. Uh, some people, so people communicate, they talk about different things, they share experiences, and uh, so they, they tell each other about different things they, they saw or uh, felt or experienced. And we just uh, absorb this information. And mm -hmm. originally, uh, that that was practically the only source uh, of uh, national stereotypes. But in the world of today, of course, a major source of stereotypes is uh, mass media and the internet, of course. Uh, Can you say that stereotypes are subjective? Uh, yes, uh, they are. Uh, they are subjective. Uh, they, they are. They are based on limited information. That that's mm -hmm. a, an important word uh, to say. Uh, it's the information we put into a stereotype is is always limited. It, it, it's never the mm -hmm. whole truth. So someone told you something about, mm -hmm. I don't know, ab about Americans. Okay, and uh, and. You, you've never been there yourself. You only heard somebody talking about it and uh, you take it, oh, okay, all right, mm -hmm. I will remember this. Uh, a, a usual stereotypical statement uh, looks like this. All Russians are like this mm -hmm. or all Americans mm -hmm. are like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, strictly speaking, it cannot be true. All people are not the same. Yeah. Uh, people are very different uh, wherever you go. But this is, you know, that's the, the, the essence of a stereotype. That's why it's like, you know, uh, called so that we, we think we, we, or we, we had some limited contact with the people from a certain culture or of a certain race or nation. And and then we tend to apply this limited knowledge to the rest of the country or to the rest of the culture, and we think, mm -hmm. okay, or all French are like this, or all Russians are like that. that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So also talking of um, where stereotypes come from, uh, can you say that is uh, well when a stereotype. Um, shows up in history at some point. Um, will it remain the same after like 20 years uh, or it will change somehow? So are stereotypes static or like active? Do they change? Of course they do. Of course they do. And uh, uh, 
Well, I mean, it's it's easier to speak uh, about some concrete. Uh, so let, let's t let's talk about Russians and Americans, and, just yeah. for the sake of the argument. And uh, plus, it's our subject today. Yes, <laughs> because the relations between countries change, mm -hmm. and the the political climate changes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the governments change, and and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, the stereotypes they go along with all these changes. Mm -hmm. And so today, uh, if the political climate is uh, favorable and it's good, uh, so the weather is good, okay, on the political horizon, then you know people of both countries may think, oh yeah, these are our friends. Uh, you know, we like them, and so on and so forth. And then something changes, or there is war uh, between two countries, and then of course the the mood changes and the attitude changes. All oh, those damn Russians, uh, <laughs> let's kill them all, and they are bastards, they are our enemies, and so on. So and and, and that's how it goes, and that's how it went uh, throughout history. Like before October Revolution, you know, America was the like the the, the strongest capitalist uh, you know nation yeah. of the early 20th century and it, there was kind of a friendly battle some kind of competition then after 1917 there was this red scare okay Americans were afraid of communists so mm -hmm. we got a bad name okay for being red uh, red meaning bad okay and but then Uh, during the Second World War, uh, we were brothers in arms and we were allies and we were fighting Nazis together. And there was a, a meeting on the Elba River uh, in April 1945 and everything was great. But right after that, right after the end of the Second World War, there was a Cold, Cold War. War. And then for many years, again, we were enemies, we were evil <clears throat> empire and so on and so forth. And people believed that all... Russians think about is how to kill more Americans mm -hmm. and Americans thought that oh yeah uh, the, you know we we must kill more Russians <laughs> and, 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 and this this is silly uh, but we will win yeah yes uh, in one of the uh, Woody Allen films it's a film actually about it's a parody of Russian history and mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a Uh, Russian general talking to the troops and he says we're going to go to battle with the French so if they kill more of us they win but if we kill more of them we win are there any questions and one of the soldiers raises his hands and says yes I have a question what do we win mm -hmm. uh, so this is exactly the, 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 the essence of all this stuff what do we win because it Especially in the in in a thing like Cold War, practically nobody wins. It's it's a no win situation. Uh, but yeah. there is a lot of hostility. There is a lot of bad attitude, uh, based again on very limited experience and very limited information. So, so government plays a very big role in forming stereotypes. Well, yes, especially in a totalitarian society where there is no freedom of speech, where there is no freedom of movement, when mm -hmm. people cannot go abroad and check out for themselves what Americans are like or what Russians are like. Uh, if you stay within the borders of your country or you live all your life in your little village somewhere mm -hmm. in Siberia, you have no way of checking Uh, you know what, what what these people are really like, so you have to rely on the you know the TV set. But what about uh, today and nowadays? Can we say that the government's attitude is still very? It it still influences a lot of people, but it's just translated through mass media and internet. Well, I I understand that. Um, during Soviet times, you didn't have internet, so the only uh, way to get information from the government was uh, the radio or the television, right? And, and so, the newspapers. Yeah, and so today, um, well, it's still the same. Can we say it like that? That it's still, the government influences people a lot, but now it's more... Um, massive <laughs> or like 
it has changed uh, or has it become more yes less? and no uh, it it has changed uh for people who are curious enough and mm-hmm. who are you know doubtful about propaganda and about what uh, the government tells them mm-hmm. uh, so these curious uh, open-minded people they always want to check out for themselves mm-hmm. So they, you know, always have a little doubt. Well, maybe that's not quite so. Maybe I should look uh, at some other sources of mm-hmm. information and see what they have to say. Or maybe I just, you know, you know, call my friend in America by Skype mm-hmm. or one of those channels and just talk to him and ask how things are there. Yeah, like like how... I did during uh, when the quarantine just began. Yeah. Me and Lecha <laughs> were just t- like texting each other because he doesn't believe uh, the mass media and I don't believe, like especially Russian television. And we were just checking out what's happening like throughout. Exactly. So I that, don't know, Snapchat. <laughs> but I, I also regretfully must say that uh, the majority of the population, the average people mm-hmm. on in both countries, they still are buying what mass media tell them. Mm-hmm. And th- there are more people who believe the TV set uh, than the internet. Or, yeah. I mean, if you talk about elderly people, uh, pensioners and just average people who live not in the big cities but somewhere uh, deep in the country and you start talking to them and they use this wonderful phrase I saw it on TV I, saw, I but, know it's true but they, they said like that so yes. it's true it has yes. to be like that's that that's right yeah John Fogarty had a song uh, I Cause know it's, it's true because I saw it, it on, on TV. TV exactly and then of course they they believe that uh, um, I don't know Obama Chmo and uh, you know, like what do you care how do you know so but mass media especially the federal channels mm-hmm. uh, which are controlled by the government they do it on purpose it's it's not an accident they are working on us yeah, yeah. and they are forming our attitudes and our stereotypes of each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and this is not good. I, I don't like it. And I, uh, you know, ever since I set my foot uh, on American soil back in 1991, uh, and but even before that, I uh, had a chance to, to meet live Americans and speak to them and mm-hmm. I thought they were great people, and I really liked the people. And especially after the first visit, uh, I found out that, no, they are not all fat. No, they do not always eat hamburgers uh, at McDonald's. Uh, They are not all stupid. There are very many intelligent, well-read, well-educated people who listen to a lot of music and read a lot of books, and there is always something... To talk about with them and you know uh, just like uh, many uh, you know educated well-read uh, and well-bred Russian people so yeah uh, so you continually came to our next uh, question in the next uh, I don't know uh, phase of our video of Russian and American stereotypes like separately okay so you just um named some of the most popular uh russian stereotypes about americans so are there any other um stereotypes that you can hear from russians about americans or like anything like that well, I think the ones I mentioned are the most popular. At mm-hmm. least I heard them repeatedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that all, all Americans are stupid and and all of them are fat. Uh, and, you know, something like that. Uh, and, of course, yes, there are many fat people in America, I, I must admit. 
uh, th- there are more, I-, I would say, there are more fat people in America than I- I- in Russia, I suppose. Yeah. But I, uh, on the other hand, I-, I try not to use the word all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, very then often. Then it doesn't sound like a stereotype. <laughs> exactly. It sounds like a fact. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yes. What concerns uh, American stereotypes about Russians, uh, I don't think there are many. Because uh, for for Americans, we are kind of aliens. Uh, not many Americans even can uh, tell where Russia is. Even though it is the biggest country of the world, I once was asked... Uh, you know, Russia, wh- where is that? Um, <laughs> so, uh, for, because Americans are mostly focused on themselves. Uh, mm-hmm. And if if they ask you where you come from and you say you are from Petrozavodsk, of course, they never heard of the name Petrozavodsk. Then you start talking about St. Petersburg and then you mention Finland, that it is next door to Finland. Then, of course, yeah. comes the next question, where is Finland? Because yeah, I think most Americans think that if you say that you're from Russia... It is like a hundred percent that you're from Moscow, <laughs> because yeah. anytime I told my I don't know friends or someone at school uh, last oh no it was two years ago yeah no it was two years ago it was two years ago when I told uh, some students at school that I'm from Russia and are you from R- Moscow and no I'm not from Moscow and yeah that's I think that's a stereotype. But all Russians are from Moscow. <laughs> all Russians are from Moscow, and it's always cold, and it's yeah. always snowing. They uh, drink vodka for breakfast. They, we they ride don't. bears. We ride bears, and we play the balalaika, riding yeah. the bear. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The banya. Well, no, it's it's not such a yeah. Not not stir. many words. Uh, not many people heard the word banya. Banya, yeah, yeah. like sauna probably. But. Yeah, but still, uh, <laughs> so. I think there are, if we try to, you know, generalize, we would say that there are more stereotypes in Russia about America than in America about Russia. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of stereotypes about America are negative. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Even though, again, in the youth culture, in the counterculture, even in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, there was admiration and fascination uh, of America. You know, these bell-bottom jeans, long hair, mm-hmm. loud music, hippie culture, all that kind of stuff. That was all the rage, and that was uh, really fantastic. And people uh, loved America, never never visiting America. Of course, and American movies, uh, they were the greatest Mm-hmm. and uh, people really loved them. But at the same time, again, the official uh, propaganda and the official information <clears throat> was mostly negative about the racial problems, about this and that, and about the unemployment. Why do you think it is that way, that Russians have more stereotypes about Americans. Is that like in the nature of Russians to, I don't know, gossip or just talk about someone else and care less about yourself? Or can you say that it's just natural to Russians? No, I no, I, I don't think it's, it's specific about us uh, necessarily. I think the whole world is concerned with America. Mm -hmm. I think America, the United States of America, is always on the agenda wherever you go. So if you go to Scandinavian countries or you go to France, then uh, you will hear a lot how much they dislike America or how they don't care about America. But America is still on their mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or if you go to some other countries, uh, they, they would say how much they love America and how much they want to be there mm-hmm. and how they dream about it. Uh, so, and it's still always there. Uh, so I think it's because of this unique position of America. I think it's not even the unique position. Everything comes from America. And so it's just, the, actually, it's just the center of globalization nowadays. So how can it not be on 
each country's minds. I don't That's know. right. So first everything goes to America. Yeah, like people immigrate to America. Is it then jealousy that makes up new stereotypes or, I don't know, changes them? Or what is that? I don't know. Uh, maybe in a way jealousy, I think, uh, yeah, has a certain role to play. But maybe there are some so, some other things. But like America is the nation of nations. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, everybody first went there and brought with them their culture and Americans, they kind of reworked that like pizza. You know, there are a lot of people who think that pizza is an American invention. Mm. Uh, even though the, even the word itself uh, is Italian, but now it's considered to be like American fast food. Mm -hmm. Pizza Hut and so on, Papa John's. Uh, so they just rework it, repackage it, uh, and give it back uh, to the world. Uh, you know, because Americans, they, they can sell really well. Uh, they, yeah. they, 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 you know, they are better than anybody else. So I, I think that's why uh, you know, America is on everybody's mind, but Russia is not on everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you watch American TV, you will never hear anything about Russia uh, unless there is some, something really serious or really tragic yeah, some kind yeah. of disaster mm -hmm. like Chernobyl or there is some war or, or something else then uh, yes. it will be in the news other than that Russia is not there uh, like many other countries uh, as I said Americans are focused on themselves mm -hmm. so they don't even have many stereotypes uh, about other nations, including us. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, when during the, the First World War, when there was, uh, uh, you know, war against Germany, uh, many German immigrants in America whose last name was Müller, uh, they changed it uh, to be Miller. Okay, mm -hmm. because there was a lot of a lot of uh, anti-German, uh, you know, attitudes and, and mood. Sure. And hamburger was renamed. It was uh, called um, Freedom Sandwich or something like what? that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Freedom uh, Sandwich. Yeah, oh. and uh, during George Bush the Junior, when uh, uh, France did not support America in their war in Iraq. There was a lot of anti-French uh, um, mood in America, and so they um, French fries were called Liberty fries. <laughs> so I mean, it's kind of funny. But the, still, it didn't form any stereotypes after all. No, they 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 were trying. They were trying to change and and to form a negative stereotype, but it didn't go too far because so people just didn't uh... people don't, didn't buy it. Okay. But the the authorities kind of tried, and uh, uh, but in 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 case of Russia, in in many cases, uh, what the authorities try, they achieve. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, again. What do you think of stereotypes today? Do young people tend to have stereotypes uh, today, or is it more like to the old people fashion? No, no. St Everybody has stereotypes. It doesn't matter uh, if you're young or old or, uh, you know, educated or not educated. Well, I mean, are young people still influenced by stereotypes nowadays? Well, I think it, it, it's for you to say. I mean, you are the young person. I, well, I'm, how do you think? Well, I think they are more skeptical nowadays. Okay. Uh, I think they are more open-minded and more skeptical. Yeah, uh, and they doubt. Exactly. <laughs> they doubt more. Uh, yeah. They they don't buy. They this, don't watch TV first. Exactly. Of all. Yeah. They they don't <laughs> buy government propaganda. And they don't uh, listen to as radio. like one hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. uh, they they you know always want to check uh, other sources if uh, they want to, or they just don't believe, which I think is fine. Uh, what about the elderly people? The elderly people are still the victims of the television. So uh, They very much are the victims of the television. 
and they believe, well, especially if they live again in some rural area, in some village, um, they, they may not have running water or, you know, flush uh, toilet, but they have a satellite dish uh, on their TV and they watch this TV constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, they buy everything they get from it. Uh, and and then their attitude towards the world uh, and to other people is formed only based on that. They never travel. They don't even have a foreign passport. But they, they stay where they are. But they have a very strong, very fixed opinion uh, about things and nations and countries and, and politics and everything. Especially, you know, you know the, the easiest example was this conflict with, you know, the... Um, Crimea in 2014 Mm -hmm. and of course all Ukrainians all Ukrainians you see I'm talking in stereotypes are now enemies Uh, they are bad people uh, so we don't like Ukrainians uh, and so on so forth and which is sad which is really sick Mm -hmm. it's a sick game that the government plays but they keep playing it Uh, what do they want to achieve like just to keep um, the nation like within the country or to what do they want to achieve that they want to achieve loyalty first of all they want to achieve support Mm -hmm. for their own you know for their power for their authority and and they just want to control the minds of the people and the easiest way is to you know keep them on a short leash Mm -hmm. uh so you you don't give people a chance sometimes or don't give them freedom to form their own opinion on just to go to America or to Ukraine or to Poland yeah. uh, and and form your own opinion but be, because then you may have doubts then you may have and then uh, you difficult like questions to, then then you would like to leave your country yeah 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 immigrate. so it, it's much easier who needs that <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe it's e- easier just to to keep you where you are and to feed you mm-hmm. all that rubbish and you're gonna eat it uh, yeah. and you're gonna swallow it and you're gonna say thank you yeah. and and you know that's it, it's it's politics okay. it's politics it's a sick game yeah so why don't we move on to our questions? Yes. Or you would like to add something else to the topic? No, I, I think I, it's it's high time we answered the question which which came long time ago. Yeah. And, but it, it it also has to do with uh, Russians and Americans. And yeah. th- the question was how much. Uh, do American students in American universities, how much they know about Russia, Russian literature, Russian culture, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think I partially answered this uh, question already, but I I would just want to add that uh, there are very, very few people who are motivated, or rather say obsessed with Russia, uh, and these people, they want to study Russian, they want to read uh, Russian literature, they, they want, want to, to come to Russia. They want to come to Russia. They want to listen to Russian music. They are interested in in Russian culture generally. Yeah. But there are very very few of, of, of these people, especially in American province. By and large, of course, as I said, Americans are interested in themselves, and so they. Even the the level of background basic knowledge uh, is is very limited when it comes to to Russia. Not very many people in America ever heard the name of Alexander Pushkin. Yeah. Uh, exactly. you, you talk about Russian literature; they heard somewhere, you know, Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. Mm-hmm. There is nobody else. There is only yeah. Tolstoy and only Dostoevsky. We just. Sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come Who, on. <laughs> even though in Russia, of course, you, poet, poet, and writer number one is Alexander Pushkin, doesn't exist. This this name doesn't yeah. ring the bell in any uh, American mm-hmm. mind. And, and the same about you can talk about Russian actors, you can talk about Russian film directors, 
Uh, Come on, e- if they don't know Pushkin, they can't exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah, they they else. would never know Davlatov, Vysotsky, no, no, no. Uh, or Yevtushenko, or a- any any of those people. So, but people who are interested, uh, and I, you know, you know, met such people, communicated with the, with these people who are interested in Russia and in Russians. These people are, of course, very different, and they would know, and they w- would have read. Uh, you know, Pushkin and Lermontov and, and, and many other, and Akhmatova and uh, Pasternak and many mm-hmm. other Russian writers. And, you know, there would be something to talk about with them. Yeah, and they ask a lot of questions. And they ask a lot Russia, of questions. Like whether, I don't know, school, uh, government and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah, but talking uh, about the um, Ameri- uh, Russian literature... Um, so I had this, um, teacher of world literature and after some class, I, or I was waiting for my dad to pick me up after school. I don't remember, but I came to her classroom and she asked me about some literature classes back in Russia or something like that. And so I named uh, a couple of authors like Pushkin and uh, Dostoevsky and she she was like, yeah, yeah, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Pushkin, I've heard of them. And I was like, Lermontov. And, and then that was just the end of it. That's right. And I was so fascinated with this reaction because Lermontov, he lived like at the same time with Pushkin, he's still a legend in Russian literature, but how is that? And, and I just love Lermontov a lot, so I was very disappointed that people just don't know about yeah. him. And yeah, but moving on, we have three more questions All right. uh, from other people. Okay. The first question sounds like this. Is it true that Americans hate Russians so much? Well, the short answer is no. No. <laughs> they, of course, they no. They, they don't hate us they, because they don't know us. Yeah. But uh, when That's they... That's a great quote, I should yeah. say. Uh, but when they get to know us, they love us. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Oh. Next question. The question is, um, quote, <laughs> I've heard that... Uh, most Americans are less literate that, than Russians. Is that true? This is an interesting uh, stereotype, I would say. Uh, and, but uh, by and large, you know, we, we used to be the, the Russian, the Soviet people uh, were called the most reading nation in the world. The, uh-huh. the Russian people used to read a lot of books. And uh, by comparison, uh, Americans uh, are not so well read. Uh, so I would say maybe uh, we uh, are more knowledgeable about world literature uh, and, of course, uh, and Russian literature in particular than Americans. But on the other hand, I have a, a feeling that nowadays young people do not read as much. What what about like writing grammar and stuff that that way? Oh oh oh, well I think Russians are are bad too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just... well, Americans are bad enough. Graduate students, you know, who are writing their diploma projects. Yeah. Sometimes they are Russian, and they are writing in their own in in their native language in Russian. Sometimes you feel like you know, taking the red pen and crossing the whole thing out because mm-hmm. this is ridiculous what kind of mistakes people make. So in terms of literature, you think that uh, Americans now are more well-read or or it's still like Russians are... You think Russians are better? I, yeah, yeah. I, I think Russians are still in, better. In literature. In, in, in literature, in being, you know, yeah. grammatically correct okay. and so on in their own language because... Let's not forget that in America there are lots of people who never go to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, to say nothing of, uh, you know, university or college, uh, yeah. they they hardly ever go to school, uh, especially in these, uh, you know, ghettos and you know um, inner city uh, districts. So of course you can't uh, 
expect any correct English uh, from people like that. Mm -hmm. Russian kids, <clears throat> again, the majority of them still go to school, at yeah. least to the ninth grade. Yeah, yeah. And at least they can uh, write a simple sentence without making 10 mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last question for today. What is the most ridiculous uh, stereotype in your opinion? Well, we can take one from like Russians about Americans and the other side. Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. Or mm -hmm. just in general, what comes to your mind? Well, I think the most ridiculous stereotype, probably on both sides, uh, at least I heard it here in Russia, that Americans are only, from morning till night, they are only thinking about how to destroy Russia and how to kill all <laughs> Russians. What? Yeah, but I mean, this, this is an old one. Uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, many Russian people uh, uh, thought so, that Americans want to kill us all and to destroy our way of life okay. and to destroy... I think this is the most ridiculous thing um, the most ridiculous r stereotype of Americans about Russians is probably, you know, you know, bears and balalaikas and that it is <laughs> cold. that it is cold uh, to an twelve months uh, yeah. around the year that it's always cold. Uh, so maybe, but I don't know. Okay, that is a good answer. <laughs> Thank <way>. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope I hope this was um, not too bad. It was very interesting for us to film today. I hope uh, you liked it. Please write something nice in the comments. And if you want to see other videos in English, then please um, feel welcome to write all your suggestions and yeah. uh, and yeah, of course compliments. We, <laughs> we 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 had to take a pause. Uh, there, there was a, a kind of long break. Yeah. Uh, and there were good reasons for that, believe me. But we we hope to come back again uh, sooner. Soon, yeah. <laughs> sooner. Yeah. Sooner, yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, so, thank you. It was Professor Krasnov. And the daughter of Professor Krasnov, <laughs> Alexander Krasnov. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>